I'd like to call the March 2nd, 2021 Committee on Accreditation meeting to order. Will the secretary please call the roll? Cynthia Almos. Romaline Bolatayo. Here. Kathy Krish. Here. Christian Tragowski. Here. Cheryl Forbes. Bob Fraley. Here. Mike Hillis. Here. Lynn Larson. Here. Marty Martinez. Here. Anna Moore. Here. Gerard Morrison. Here. Kevin Taylor. Here. We have a quorum. Great. Uh, this is a reminder that we are once again conducting this meeting entirely virtually. Just a couple of reminders before we get started. Most staff and members are participating from their own locale, and a few may be in the commission office. The Zoom link has, made, uh, has been made available to the public. We'd like to ask that everyone check their Zoom identification and make sure it contains your first and last name accurately so we are able to call on you appropriately and also so that we get all names accurately recorded in the, re in the record. If you need to update your name, click on the three dots in the window with your picture to bring up the rename option. As we did in October, we're using the webinar platform in Zoom as opposed to the meeting platform. When it is time to take up an item, we will need a moment to bring the appropriate attendees into the main meeting room and make sure they can see and hear the committee and we can see and hear them. Participants will need to turn on their camera and unmute. For our microphones, Members of the committee, we are going to mute your microphones to eliminate any background noise that may get in the way of others hearing what is being said by the speakers. We ask that when you speak, you unmute yourself, but then please, once you are done speaking, please go back to being muted. You may use the space bar to temporarily unmute yourself as long as the active window is the Zoom window. Much like an intercom system, you just need to press the space bar while you are speaking and release it when you are done. C commenting or asking questions. Committee members, some of you may be using the video audio functions and some of you will be using audio only. If you're using the video and wish to make a comment, please either physically raise your hand on the camera or use the raise hand feature on Zoom, which is located at the bottom of the Zoom screen. If you are unable to do either of these options, as a last resort, you can also send a message maybe in chat if we get the chat working uh, feature in order to signal that you have a question or a comment. You can also email um, Aaron Sullivan if, uh, if, if you need to. Several of us will be looking for those comments or questions in the chat and the raised hands, but please make sure we don't miss you if you have something to say. So just stand up and jump up and down and, and we'll get to you. Because we are a public body and must conduct our business in the public forum, we ask that you do not use the chat feature to make substantive comments or have discussions uh, on any items. Public attendees of this meeting cannot see the chat box, and those who view the video archive of this meeting will not have access to any conversations in the chat. When you make your motion, please state the motion in full so that there is no question what the motion is. All votes will be conducted via roll call. Just before the vote, we will remind everyone to make sure you are unmuted so that we do not miss anyone's vote. If you are unable to respond via video or audio, you may make your vote known through the chat function. The secretary will have to read your name and your vote when she gets to that part of the roll call vote to make it an official part of the meeting, the record, and to make sure that the public knows what the vote is. Because this can be quite cumbersome, we would like to leave this as the last option. For public comment, if any member of the public wishes to comment on a specific item, please use the raised hand feature at the bottom of your screen during the item. You will be brought into the main meeting room at the appropriate time and asked to state your name and affiliation for the record. If you wish to speak on a specific item, please send a request through the chat feature which we hope to get up in Zoom, telling us which item you wish to speak to so we can make sure to call on you during the appropriate time, or you can send your comments through the chat mode and we will read those aloud. Please make sure you have your full name and affiliation and which item, number, and name. There is also a time designated for general public comment at the end of the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. After the meeting ends, the archived video 
uh, and audio will be available uh, via the Commission's website. Do committee members have any questions about these protocols? All right, that takes us um, to item two, which is the approval of the agenda. The first item is the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda for the March 2nd meeting? Motion by Member Chikowski. Do I have a second? By a second by, by Member Balatayo. We will now do a roll call vote. In favor, say aye. Opposed, say no. Secretary, please call the names. Jomaline Balatayo. Aye. Kathy Kresha. Aye. Katrina Chikowski. Aye. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item three is the approval of the minutes of the prior meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the January 2021 meeting? It would be appropriate for any committee member not in attendance at that meeting to abstain. Do I have a motion? Motion by Member Larson, a second by Member Taylor. Any corrections or changes? We will now do the roll call vote. In favor, say aye. Opposed, say no. Secretary, please call the names. Jomaline Balatayo. Aye. Kathy Kresha. Aye. Katrina Joukowsky. Abstain. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. Perfect. Motion carries. Uh, item four are the co-chair and member reports. Do any members have anything to report? I guess I have one. Um, I was invited by um, Seattle Pacific University um, as a panel speaker for their English Learner Series. So I'm happy to do it for them. That's awesome. That's terrific news. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. It's a quiet time of year right now where everybody's kind of waiting for things to happen. All well, right. Things are about to um, happen in Long Beach after about a year, um, we've started the process of bringing students back into the classroom. Most of us have been working from empty rooms like this one. Um, March 29th, it's starting. Um, we're gonna start with the youngest kids first uh, and work up that way. So um, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty uh, because it depends on the numbers around us staying at a certain level of infection. Uh, but plans are uh, well advanced and maybe by the next time we meet, um, we'll actually have uh, students in classrooms and not just talking on, uh, on Zoom like this. Yeah. There's a lot of changes happening this week with the legislation going through and the uh, financial uh, incentives to reopen soon, even if you're in the purple. It's, it's interesting times. Yeah, Member Chikowski. Um, yeah, similarly, um, I, I think that um, in my district and in surrounding communities here in San Diego, we're really learning how to capitalize on the benefits of technology for professional development in ways that I don't think we expected we would. For example, videotaping um, via Screencastify and other apps um, interaction among students and between the teacher and the students as evidenced in really novel ways. For example, using shared Google Docs to post comments to see kids interacting synchronously um, to build meaning from a text um, in, in, in real time um, is one example that many of us had not used before. And also um, videotaping uh, these lessons and using them for, for professional development among teachers um, as we challenge teachers to identify and use varied and innovative ways to evidence student learning. So rather than relying on the same input from, for example, the same five students in the front row raise their hands, um, and now we're sort of holding ourselves more accountable to hearing the voices of all the students in our classrooms in different ways, which hopefully, as Jerry's mentioning, once we get back to class, we don't forget about. So um, when we come back, we're going to have this new toolkit 
that's really going to help maintain access to learning, I think, for students both in and beyond classrooms. So like it or not, this is rocketing us into the 21st century in a way that, that, that kids deserve. And that's pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, a friend of, I, I love what you said. A friend of mine the other day was saying, we, you know, we're talking about the learning deficits and the um, things that we'll be doing to uh, address those deficits. But also to consider, it's just what you're saying. What, what are they learning? What, what has been accomplished during this time that might carry us forward uh, to the benefit of our students uh, next year? Um, I, I think that's a, it's a great point, so... Right, that everybody well, and, and Anna, I think, I think as we think about special populations of kids, English learners, kids with autism, a lot of those students struggle in classes of 41. I mean, I have a U.S. history class with 41 students in it. I can guarantee you that I am more equitably serving kids now than I would if I had 41 kids in my classroom every day for 45 minutes period. So we need to rethink, redo, improve, and hear kids' voices, because those kids are doing much better than expected now, you know, in these conditions. So anyway, that's good. Yeah, my teacher, my teachers say that they love the opportunity to do targeted instruction in the small groups without the distractions, like, you know, to have four children in a Zoom is uh, it's really fun to teach them that way. And they're really getting to know their students in a different way. Um, not that they aren't anxious to get back um, and, and uh, you know, be able to have that heart right there in the room. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of neat things happening out there. So I look forward to seeing that. I, I wish I was a researcher right now. So <laughs> it's great times. But I guess we're all researchers sometimes when we're looking at the data and deciding how to move forward based on that data. Um, all right, thank you for your comments. Uh, anything else? All right, thank you. We will move on to staff free um, staff updates. Ms. Sullivan, will you begin, please? Yes, thank you. Um, so it hasn't been long since we last met, but um, we have some legislative updates for you. Um, the um, governor introduced his budget bill on uh, January 8th. And um, that budget bill <clears throat> includes um, a number of things. It does include $100 million in new funding <clears throat> for residency programs, <clears throat> excuse me, for uh, teachers in high needs communities and subject areas. And that'll include SPED, uh, bilingual and STEM subjects. And also another $25 million in new funding for um, classified employee programs. So that will be, um, those will be projects that, of course, our commission um, uh, grants uh, team will be working on. That, that's uh, Kara Mendoza, of course, and uh, Christina Naharo. Um, there's also three bills of interest right now. Two of them are sponsored bills of the commissions. Um, AB 320 is the um, commission's sponsored bill on pre-accreditation. So that does a couple of things. It clarifies the definition of regionally accredited institutions of higher ed. And it also will allow the commission to um, recognize degrees that are conferred by an IHE that is in the pre-accreditation status as valid once the IHE and the program of study have um, completed the accreditation process. So um, that'll be nice for candidates. Uh, another sponsored bill is AB 437, which is a subject matter competency bill that's gonna add options for meeting <clears throat> subject matter competency, <clears throat> excuse me, through courses that are completed uh, in, in undergraduate programs and also graduate programs. Um, so this is coursework that might not necessarily be part of a quote unquote subject matter program. Um, and so this will also allow for candidates to mix, mix and match these courses with CSET exams and other options. So <clears throat> it's just increasing options for candidates to meet subject matter competency uh, outside of the exams route. Um, the other bill, AB 312, uh, is not sponsored by the commission, but it is again, a bill focused on um, increasing the options for candidates to meet um, some of their requirements, in this case, specifically the basic skills requirement so AB 312 adds options for candidates to meet the basic skills requirement through coursework with a grade of B or higher and also allows candidates to mix and match 
um, from all the available options in order to meet the CBEST requirement. There are trailer bills that have been introduced to go along with the budget. Um, there is some language in the trailer bill to um, extend the options that were put in place by the governor's executive order that were then reinforced by legislation that was passed at the end of the year last year, um, which currently has an expiration date or deadline, I should say, of August 31st. Um, the trailer bill language will um, extend that August 31st uh, timeline for folks, and this will allow people to, for instance, um, start their student teaching uh, before they have their CSET completed. Um, it will allow for folks some additional options for um, moving through their program uh, and moving into their getting a preliminary credential and being able to become employed. Um, the commission is, of course, also considering the flexibilities that it has control of and, and hoping to align these things. We are working with the governor's office on um, and the Department of Finance on timelines for those things. Uh, taking into consideration all that's going on with COVID, with students being brought in back into classrooms, et cetera. So something to remember about the budget. The governor introduces the budget um, in January. It's basically his sort of wish list for his priorities. Uh, and then they, you know, the legislature will take a look at that and the governor and the legislature will be engaged in negotiations um, over, you know, what will end up being in the budget bill. Uh, and we will see a May revise that will give us um, hopefully a better sense of uh, what that budget might look like once it's signed. So we'll have an update for you on those things, of course, in the future. Um, Cheryl Hickey will not be with us today because she is on her own site visit right now, Riverside County Office of Ed. Um, also, Kara Mendoza, one of our other administrators, is on a site visit of her own today at Marin County Office of Ed. Uh, so myself and my colleague Phyllis Jacobson are um, holding down the fort here in PSD for the next few days um, and happy to be doing that. Uh, common standards submissions for institutions in the Violet cohort were due on this Sunday. A lot of them came in early. Um, a lot of them also came in over the weekend. Michelle Bernardo is um, it's sort of in charge of receiving those, checking through them. Um, I don't know, Michelle, if you want to provide any information on how that work is going right now. It was actually really great. We only have one missing um, institution. So all submitted. I think it was 30, 33 out of 34 institutions submitted their um, common standards. And we heard from that institution, right? Like we knew to expect it? No. Oh, so okay. We'll, we still have to reach out to that institution okay. to okay. check up on them. But yeah, it was good turn. Terrific. So we'll move forward with that. The dates have already been set for those common standards reviews. Um, of course, common standards review includes the team lead and the common standards reviewers who have accepted assignment to those specific site visits. Uh, so that's nice. That provides a great um, thread of continuity between this review and the eventual site visits. So our first common standards review session is on uh, March 15th and those sessions will go through April as well. So we're looking forward to doing that. Of course, we'll be doing it virtually. Um, with regard to the virtual nature of our business, we are still in the wait and see um, situation. Again, students are coming back to some of the classrooms this week. We're going to be watching to see how that rolls out. Of course, we all hope that that will be successful and more students can continue to roll out. We're watching vaccinations. Um, and certainly also watching timelines, uh, site visits that start in the fall. If we were to decide that those could be in person, we need a sufficient amount of time to get uh, hotel contracts and other kinds of contracts and things in place. So um, we were watching, I know it's sort of been the case uh, for the last 12 months of kind of let's see what happens next week. Let's see what happens in a month. And we're really still very much in that place. So just appreciate, appreciating everybody's ability to remain flexible while we kind of watch all of the things that are at play right now as we make our decisions. Um, I understand, committee member Hillis, you had your rate hand raised. Yeah, Aaron, just really quickly, I seem to recall that in addition to the uh, bills that are dealing with the subject matter competency and the uh, basic skills that there was also gonna be a uh, budget trailer 
dealing with the same thing? Is that still the there case? There is. Yes. Okay. And thank you for bringing that up. So not only were those issues about CBEST and CSET introduced in their own independent standing bills by individual legislators, that same language was introduced in the trailer bill language. So what does that mean? If um, the trailer bill and the budget are approved with the language as it stands, um, that has to be signed, you know, uh, July 1st past, I'm sorry, June 30th. So if, um, if that language on CSET and CBEST stays in the trailer bill, then uh, it will become, uh, it, will, it will go into force starting on July 1st. So we are anticipating that and trying to do whatever it is that we need to do um, cover all our bases at the commission to make sure that we're ready for that implementation should that happen. Obviously, if that happens, the other two bills will not need to continue moving forward. If that language doesn't stay in the trailer bill, those other bills will continue to move forward. And if they are passed, then they will go into force on January 1. So budget language goes in force July 1. Regular bills, all other bills go in force on Jan 1. So we're kind of watching that. The fact that it's introduced in two different places um, means that it's uh, clearly a priority for both the governor and the legislature. So um, we expect that it will move forward. We just don't know in what capacity yet, but we're making plans. We're making plans for the July one, just so that you know we're ready at the very soonest possible moment. Thanks for asking that question. And a question, uh, Aaron. I and I. I feel like we talked about this at some point, um, the idea of some visits, um, if an institution was in good standing on previous visits, uh, that we might continue with some um, virtual uh, accreditation site visits. Was that? So, I mean, at the moment, virtual visits are going well. I have to say it's a, it's a mixed bag. Um, there are some institutions and some team members and some consultants who really love it. And there are some institutions and some team members and some consultants who really want the in-person. I mean, you, there is something to be gained by being in person. Certainly. I think there's pros and cons for both. And we really are trying to weigh that, um, and listen to everyone's feedback about how that went. I don't know if anybody watched the commission meeting um, but UCLA had their site visit and they had their site visit virtually. And of course, um, uh, Dr. Anna-Marie Francois, who is at UCLA, uh, is a, an ex officio member of the commission and um, had wonderful things to say about the virtual nature of the site visit, um, starting with her concerns going into it um, and ending with how uh, pleased she was with how well, how well it worked out. Um, so, I mean, we were certainly pleased to hear that, um, but I, it's just not a one size fits all. So we're just trying to take everybody's feedback into consideration and, and hope that we can and make it work for everyone for sure. Committee and member, Hillis, option, see it. you know, for maybe people can choose again, if they're in good standing to have a um, virtual site visit versus in person. Yeah. I mean, certainly if we can be as flexible as possible too, we will definitely do that. There was no choice is good. <laughs> yes, absolutely. As the bills, as the uh, bills on subject matter and CBEST are showing us, right? Everybody yeah. likes options. Yeah. All right. Uh, Member Chikowski. Yeah, I was just going to say that some of the things I, I mentioned about teaching online map over onto this um, evidence collection and, <clears throat> you know, site visit verification process. I think that, you know, choice is motivating. And when you get to decide or, or have some uh, say so in terms of how that evidence is collected, it challenges one to really know what we're evidencing and to be very purposeful about what it is that we're putting together. So I think, again, I know I sound like Pollyanna today, but I think the more we can use this as an opportunity to help learn from the field about what types of evidence are most effective in um, documenting alignment between what a program's doing and what the CTC expects in terms of standards, the better. So, you know, if, we, if, if it can be kind of like continue to be a symbiotic 
um, COA, CTC field exchange. So we're mutually growing and learning. I think that that would be helpful. I know that, I mean, this is not 1950 anymore and yeah, we can do interviews, but wow, the power of a hyperlink and the, and the transition from, you know, yards of narrative to evidence-based, um, you know, portfolios online, just that shift right there sets us up to do things so much more efficiently than before. So let's keep looking at opportunities for, um, you know, multiple ways to evidence what programs are doing. You know, it's kind of exciting, kind of surprising, interesting even. Thank you. Uh, Member Larson. Just to piggyback on that too, I, I think it's an excellent time for reflection. You know, we were forced to be completely online during this past year. And so we have an opportunity to look at, work, at what worked and what didn't work and, and maybe consider hybrid approaches where we do the things that work really well online and maybe shorten site visits. Um, you know, I, I think the, the opportunity to do interviews over Zoom, you're gonna get a lot more participation because it's more convenient for folks to do it that way rather than have to come physically to the location to do interviews and so on. So um, I know I'm reflecting on that on some of the courses that I'm teaching that have been um, like our assessment course, for example, that's had to be completely on ground, but we've had to be completely online this past year. And I've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work. And so I think the taking the time to be reflective and, and thinking through that is, is a good process to go through right now. Yes. Member Hillis, yes. Yeah, Aaron, uh, just one last uh, clarification. With the CBEST, does that uh, only pertain to uh, teacher candidates or also PPS? It would apply anywhere CBEST is a requirement. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any more staff reports? Are we good? Okay, thank you. That means we can move on to item six, which is the program approval recommendations. This section is for action. Today, there are three institutions with three programs for approval. Given the complicated nature of this meeting, I suggest we take these by institution. We will do the presentation, discussion, and then vote for each one individually. The first proposal is from West Covina Unified School District for a clear administrative services credential. Do we have uh, our members? Yes, I see them. Okay, great. Joining us today are Patrick McKee, Director, Foothill Consortium Induction Program, and Kevin Ward, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, uh, Claremont Unified, and the Foothill, Foothill Consortium Assistant Superintendent Team Chairperson to answer any questions about the proposed program. Do we have any rec recusals on this item? Great. Would the institutional representatives like to say anything about the proposed program? Good morning and thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. We are just excited to bring forward to our consortium the Clear Administrative Services Credential Program with your approval, giving an opportunity just to be able to provide that personalized induction experience that we currently offer to our teachers and bringing it up to the next level. We have a number of new administrators and giving them this opportunity to personalize support system in place to assure their success as new leaders. And we're definitely open to any questions you may have about our program, but it really has been tailored and designed with stakeholders from our five member districts to make sure that we have a program that truly matches the needs of our school districts and the needs of our new leaders. Great, thank you, Mr. McKee. Uh, are there any um, committee, committee members that would like uh, to ask any questions of the institutional representatives? Yeah. All right, this is very exciting. Um, th then do I have a motion to approve West Covina USD's program? Member Tchaikovsky, please state your motion. I move that we approve West Covina's induction proposal. And uh, do I have a second? Uh, second by member Taylor. We will now do a roll call vote. In favor say aye, opposed say no. Secretary, please call the names. Thelma Lane Balatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Aye. Katrina Tchaikovsky. Aye. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. 
Did you say aye? Aye. Okay, great. All right, terrific. Well, motion carries. Congratulations. Um, there'll be lots of fun, uh, and uh, good luck to you. I'm sure it's going to be a great experience, and the administrators in your area are going to certainly pay off by customized local um, support in the induction program. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, uh, the next proposal is from University of California, Irvine for a bilingual authorization in Spanish. Joining us today are Dr. Vir do we have everybody? It looks like we do. Dr. Virginia Panish, Director, UCI MAT Program. Dr. Susan Toma Burge, Coordinator, UCI MAT uh, Multiple Subject Program. And Susan Guilfoyle, um, Bilingual Coordinator, UCI MAT Multiple Subject Program, to answer any questions about the proposed program. Do we have any recusals on this item? Seeing none, do, uh, would the institutional representatives like to say anything about the proposed program? Uh, sure, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're actually really excited to finally be at this point in the process. Um, you know, we're really proud of what we've put together and um, are excited to be able to uh, meet the growing demand in Orange County and also the growing demand among our student UCI student population um, and be able to offer them this enhanced um, version of what we've been doing. So, um, so thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to offer this opportunity to uh, the committee members to ask any questions that you'd like uh, of the institutional representatives regarding this program. Member Tchaikovsky. Well, first of all, thank you. I mean, what you're doing is hugely important and, um, and underrepresented, frankly, among credential programs in our state. Um, I, I found that it's really difficult to advise candidates in my area how to add that bilingual authorization to their credential. And that is a real um, detriment to the students of the state. So um, is, is there a way that you might just make a brief comment about um, perhaps one or two of the major hurdles you had to overcome in order to garner support for your proposal to us today? Um, I mean, I think it was just the uh, length of the process, the amount of um, um, documentation, and the, I think COVID slowed things down. So um, it was, you know, it, it took a year to get comments back. Um, and then, um, you know, we quickly acted on them. And then that the end of the process went really quickly. Um, so I think it's, it, you know, I don't know if it could somehow be streamlined. Um, the, you know, we still, uh, the language she said is still going to be required of both pathways. And, and one of the pathways is uh, Spanish majors from UCI uh, in the bilingual ed minor, and they have a Spanish Portuguese major. And um, so we're still going to have to, we're, the, uh, the Spanish Portuguese program is still going, going to work on a, a, an SMPP so that we can also not have the require the third test. But I'm hoping that these changes in the legislature with um, CSET uh, changes will mean that we don't have to have that SMPP process in place. So um, I think things are headed in the right direction. The commission is trying to think how can we get rid of barriers? So I really, I support all of those efforts because um, we have some really talented people coming into the program and to have these hurdles, it just doesn't make sense, so. Can I just, just follow up like really quickly? Um, you know, this, this idea of that exam that's required for bilingual certification, I, I've heard from numerous candidates that it really, much of the content is frankly, um, maybe perhaps, I don't know, since I haven't taken it, but misaligned with the actual demands of teaching in a bilingual setting in California. Um, and that there is um, language about an alternate pathway that's coursework. And I think you mentioned that you're still, um, you're, you're building a pathway that won't necessarily require that third exam. Is that right? Is there, is there um, perhaps just a reason why you think that's preferable direction to go? 
to increase the number of bilingual certified teachers? Um, what, I, I don't quite understand the question. What, what direction are you asking about? It sounds like you're, you're working to use coursework as an alternative for the testing requirement or in partnership with that, or maybe I misunderstand because it sounds like that would be a good idea. Well, we're, we're waiving coursework. We're waiving exams on using coursework for both of the options, but all candidates are still required to take the uh, Spanish subtest three. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? All right. Um, do I have a motion to approve UC Irvine's program? Motion by member Hillis. Uh, do I have a second? Second by member Martinez. We will now do a roll call vote. In favor say aye, opposed say no. Secretary, please call the names. Romelaine so Balatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Aye. Katrina Kuchowski. Aye. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. All right, motion carries. Congratulations. And thank you, Dr. Panish, Dr. Toma Birch, and Ms. Guilfoyle. Really appreciate you coming today. We look forward to seeing your candidates out um, in the field teaching. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Have a good day. You too. The next program proposal is from Pacific Oaks College for a bilingual authorization in Spanish and Mandarin. Joining us today are Dr. Bree Cook, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Chief Academic Officer and Accreditation Liaison Officer, Dr. Gerald Hill, Dean of School of Education, and Dr. Catherine Walter, Program Director for Teacher Credentialing to answer any questions about the proposed program. Do we have any recusals on this item? All right, would the institutional representatives like to say anything about the proposed program? Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, we're very excited to be here today and about our proposed bilingual authorization program in Spanish and Mandarin and all that it will do to support the growing need of increasing the number of highly qualified bilingual teachers to support both the growing number of dual language programs and emergent bilingual students in California schools. Um, the addition of this program at Pacific Oaks College is very much aligned with our core values of respect, diversity, social justice, and inclusion, and with our mission of trying to prepare candidates to be culturally agent, culturally intelligent agents of change who are ready and eager to serve diverse communities. Um, the bilingual authorization program is a growing request amongst so many of our teacher candidates and our district partners and faculty. And so again, we're just very excited about this opportunity and are happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the committee members? Looks like we do not have any questions, so well done. Um, and uh, that means, uh, do we have a motion? to um, approve the Pacific Oaks College program. A motion by member Hillis and a second. A second by member Chikowski. Uh, we will now do a roll call vote. Uh, Secretary, please call the names. Romelaine Bolotayo. Aye. Kathy Grisha. Aye. Katrina Chikowski. Aye. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. Terrific. Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you for coming today. We're very excited for you. Uh, the Mandarin piece, we, that doesn't come across um, our, and into our room very often. So that's uh, very exciting and uh, really addresses the needs of a global um, economy, a global education, uh, and and bringing it together, so thank you. And uh, we appreciate you being here, Dr. Cook, Dr. Hill, and Dr. Walter. Congratulations, have a great day.
All right, that takes us to item seven, which is the report of program status changes. We only have one action for this item in section C, adding a new content area. We have one institution requesting to add new content area to an existing program. The following institution has requested to add a new language to the bilingual authorization program. Staff has reviewed the requested documentation to ensure the program modifications address all standards. The program proposal is from California State University Fullerton for a bilingual authorization in Khmer. Am I saying that correctly? With us today are CSU Fullerton representatives, Dr. Kim Case, Associate Dean of the College of Education, Dr. Natalie Tran, Professor and Department Chair of Secondary Education, Dr. Fernando Rodriguez uh, Valls, Pro Professor of Secondary Education, Bilingual Authorization Program Coordinator, and World Languages Program Coordinator. They are here for any questions you may have about the program. Do we have any recusals? Great. All right, uh, I would like to invite the institutional representatives to share anything with us they'd like to about their program. Oh wait, no, that's not what I wanted to say. Um, right now we just have a motion, an opportunity for a motion. To accept the program changes. Member Chikowski, thank you. Do we have a second? Member Larson. Uh, we will now do a roll call vote. In favor, say aye. Opposed, say no. Secretary, please call the names. Phil Malene Balatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Aye. Katrina Chikowski. Aye. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. All right, motion carries. Thank you so much for coming. And again, um, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, uh, we haven't had that program come through in the, the 11 years that I've been doing that, uh, doing this. So um, you're front runners. Thank you. Appreciate it. That takes us to part two, um, sections D and E, which are for notification purposes only. No action is required. There are no programs requesting transition at this time. That's section D, section E. Um, there are no requests to move a program to inactive status. So now we move on to item eight, which is the initial program approval for new program sponsors. Consultant Poonam Badi will present this action item. Yuba City Unified School District seeks approval from the COA to offer a teacher induction program. With us today are Yuba City uh, USD representatives, Pamela Arunzaib, I think I might have had that correct, um, and Martin Ramirez, district coordinator. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? Um, all right, Ms. Badi, will you begin please? Sure. Uh, good morning, committee members. First of all, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, perfect. This item presents the Yuba City Unified School District's responses to the teacher induction program standards for the committee's consideration and possible approval. The Yuba City Unified School District was granted provisional approval by the commission at its June 2020 meeting. Provisional approval, when granted at the conclusion of stage three of the IIA process, only authorizes an institution to offer the proposed program. Then the COA makes the determination on whether or not to approve the program for operation in stage four. This is indicated in the chart that is included at the end of the item. A team of two qualified reviewers collaborated on a review of the Yuba City Unified School District submission and came to a consensus on a final finding of a line for all program standards. And you'll find a link to the final submission and the reviewer feedback on page two of the item. And as introduced earlier, we have with us today representing the Yuba City Unified School District, Pamela Arunzeb, uh, Cindy Gappa, and Martin Ramirez. And they're available to answer any programmatic questions committee members may have. Thank you. All right, uh, institutional representatives, any of you would like to uh, make a comment today? Yes. yes, good morning. Um, we just like to say we are delighted um, to have the opportunity to meet with you today and express our gratitude for taking the time 
to work through this process with us. Um, we know induction is the foundation for a career in professional learning, and we look forward to further embedding induction into the, the culture of our professional practice within the district and enjoying the flexibility of selection, training, and support for our mentors, as well as the increased ability to support our beginning teachers. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, is there any of the committee members, do you have any questions for the institution? Well, well done. Um, right now, this is an action item. Do I have a, a motion? Member Balatayo, can you please state your motion? Oh, muted. I make a motion that we, um, I'm sorry. I make the motion that we, per, um, the COA grant initial program approval to YCUSD's proposed teacher induction program. Terrific, thank you. Do I have a second? Second by member Krishya. Uh, we will now do a roll call vote. In favor say aye, opposed say no. Chomalene Balateo. Aye. Kathy Krishya. Aye. Katrina Chikowski. Aye. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. Mm, terrific motion carries. We want to thank the institutional representatives for coming today. It was nice to see your faces and uh, we look forward to hearing about your program in the future. Have a great day. Thanks for coming. Which here more? Yeah. Just one, uh, one comment. We understand that the chat feature cannot be enabled once uh, the meeting is in progress. So it might be good just to remind anybody who are the participants that if you wish to make a comment, or have a question, maybe use the ready, raise hand feature. We can't see that. We will not be able to see the chat. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on then. See you later, bye-bye. <laughs> uh, to item nine, uh, which is the institutions not in compliance with accreditation timelines. And I'm so thrilled to say that we have no late documents reported at this time. I, I reflected on this um, when I was going through the agenda and wondered, you know, if if this report and the fact that we're communicating with people is really providing any incentive. Um, not sure if there's an answer to that question, but it's really nice. And really, I'm sure the um, CTC really appreciates getting the on-time documents to keep the flow going. Uh, Member Larson. I just wanted to make a, a quick comment and um, just for the record, acknowledge the hard work of the BIR members in the reviews that we saw today. Um, the comments were extensive and you could see that they had worked extremely hard to make sure that there was alignment between um, the program submissions and the standards. And um, having been a BIR member for many years before joining the COA, I know what a time consuming process that is. And there are a couple of resubmissions and so on. So. Just wanted to acknowledge the, the hard work of those folks. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I too was a member of BIR for a long time and, and appreciate the amount of work that it takes um, to make the alignments occur and ask those provocative questions when you, when you can't read you know, between the lines. Um, thank you. Do we have uh, everybody here for item 10, the 930 time certain? Looks like we do. I know Sarah's here. Is everybody here, Sarah, that you can see? Um, I see Dr. Marco Nava. I, is Dr. Pernin here? I see Dr. Pernin. I don't see Dr. Joe. Dr. Birdsell. She, I know she just texted me, so I know she's somewhere. <laughs> Maybe she hasn't been let in yet. Okay, so yeah, Dr. Joe Birdsell is our team lead, and that is the last person to need be. her yes I do not yet see her in the attendees list Sarah. so we're looking okay she just texted me so okay as soon as she pops in we'll, we'll bring her over okay yeah she says do we want to take a five minute break 
to make sure she gets here. Oh, there she is. Great. Oh, great. Oh. Popped in. Okay. Also, Cheyenne, um, I know you're listening. It looks like committee member Martinez is over in the attendees list. He may have had to rejoin for some reason. Can you please bring him into the main meeting? Marty Martinez. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Erin. I was wondering what happened. All of a sudden, I couldn't see or have a mute. So I looked up and I saw you in the attendees and not the panelists. I'm like, well, let's bring him into the meeting. Okay. <laughs> you're welcome. Hey, just let us know when you're ready. We are ready. Uh, the, the item 10 is the report of the accreditation team to Los Angeles Unified School District. Consultant Sarah Solari Colombini and consultant Michelle Williams George will introduce this item. Joining them today is team lead jo Dr. Joe Birdsell and institutional representative Patricia Pernan, administrative coordinator of teacher and administrator support, and Dr. Marco Nava, administrator of induction and credentialing programs. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? Yeah. All right, Ms. Colombini, will you begin please? Certainly, thank you. And so I will um, present this morning, although um, Dr. Um, Michelle Williams-George was such a help on this visit. So um, good morning, COA members. Um, it is a pleasure to be here with you this morning to share information about the accreditation site visit that was held January 24th through the 27th via technology for the Los Angeles Unified School District. Um, I would like to thank Dr. Patricia Pernan and her staff for the preparation for this site visit. The team members were able to access the accreditation website, the learning platform, Live Text, um, which is used to house candidates' performance assessments, and the Zoom links for the many interviews that were conducted. As I mentioned, um, Michelle Williams George, um, who's with us right here um, today, um, was on this visit and uh, we couldn't have done it without her. So thank you, Michelle. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't thank our team lead, Dr. Joe Birdsell, um, and the team members who were on this site visit. As you know, this work cannot be accomplished without the Board of Institutional Reviewers. So I would like to publicly acknowledge their work today. You can see from the site visit report that we had an extensive team since LAUSD offers many programs. So with that, I will hand this over to Dr. Birdsell so that she may share the team's recommendations with you. Thank you, Sarah. It's uh, again, my pleasure to present to you a bit of the context for the LAUSD site visit that led to the team, that led the team to the findings of all standards met for all programs and common standards. As uh, Sarah mentioned, this was an online visit. I must thank Sarah and Michelle as consultants who helped me in all aspects of getting this visit completed through Zoom interviews and a Zoom team meeting room. This was my first time as a Zoom team lead uh, and they made it very smooth for me, thank you. Also a big thanks to Patricia Pernan and the team for facilitating the interviews, the attendance process and having hosts in the Zoom room taking attendance and ensuring the link was working before they exited so that we could conduct the interviews. We had a team room that we kept open through much of the visit so that team members could link in to ask questions, get clarifications, and seek additional information as needed. Then formal team meetings were held twice a day throughout the visit to share findings, determine additional needs, and gain consensus on findings. We heard candidates repeatedly note how the programs make them feel heard and safe. In every group, people discuss the extensive level of communication and collaboration. I hope you had a chance to review the institution summary part of the report. The team consistently heard praise for each of the programs, the coursework, support resources, and work with their coaches. Team members wanted to make sure you understood the positive impact which educators felt they were having for the students of LAUSD. Team members were even more impressed that these programs were so well designed, implemented, and coordinated given the size and scope of LAUSD. I am happy to respond to any questions you might have at the appropriate time. Perfect, thank you for your um, report. We now invite the institutional representatives to briefly comment about the visit. We remind you that this is not a time to dispute the team report, but rather to provide any thoughts you had on the visit. 
Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Marco Nava, and I'm happy to say I'm not disputing any part of this report. So thank you so much. Um, and to the commission, thank you for sending such a supportive team uh, to the site visit for LA Unified. Um, Sarah was so great. Michelle was so great in getting us prepared for this visit. Uh, and then I want to thank Dr. Birdsell for leading her team in the site visit. They made it so welcoming for everyone who was participating. Uh, people were eager to volunteer and be part of these interviews. They were looking forward to sharing their experience in our programs. And I will say to the commission that this visit was so important for Los Angeles Unified. It helped us because we're such a large division and so many program offerings within our, our unit that this really helped us to learn more about each person's programs uh, from teacher induction and credentialing to the administrator induction and credentialing. It helped to break down silos that we can sometimes see in large districts. And so this process was really a reflective moment for us to continue refining our programs and to improving them. And so we're very thankful to the commission and to the site visit team uh, for this opportunity for us to continue learning. Thank you. I also want to say thank you because it was a wonderful experience. I know people say, really, a wonderful experience? Actually, it was. It was a great experience. It was a wonderful time for us to get together as a team and to understand what we had to provide to the CTC and on the Committee on Accreditation. Thank you again, Sarah, for all of your leadership throughout this program, as well as Michelle and Dr. Birdsall. I don't know what we would have done without you. You were fantastic and your team was fantastic. I have to say, I had tears in my eyes when she went through the report on the last day. It was such a beautiful report and thank you again. And we are so appreciative and we're so anxious to continue this whole process as we move forward and to continue to review everything that we do as a team as we move forward in these next few years. Thank you again. Thank you for your comments. Um, boy, PSD, you rocking it again. Uh, thank you so much for all your hard work. And uh, I, before I turn it over for comments to the committee members, I am thrilled to hear that Live Text is still up and running. Um, I was the director of the first program that brought Live Text to California. So it just really, um, you know, it, I think it just says, speaks to every, for all of us, for our hard work that we do. We never know how it moves forward when we move on. So um, I'm glad to hear that you're still using that. Any questions or comments from the committee members? Uh, Member Hillis. Yeah, first of all, just uh, congratulations on just an incredibly impressive report. Uh, it was uh, wonderful to read and uh, the scope of work you all do is, is pretty breathtaking, uh, to be honest. Um, one of the questions I had was, um, you know, I was just kind of curious about teacher retention uh, within LA Unified. Um, specifically, there's a comment made about um, focusing in on the preparation on the policies uh, and initiatives of LAUSD. And so just thinking about how does that then transfer if a teacher uh, leaves LAUSD into a different uh, district? So just more of a curiosity question than anything else. I think one of the most important pieces that we have in the preliminary program is of course, we start with the basic standards and the basic standards are determined by the a commission on teacher credentialing. So we do do all of those basic standards. However, what we do add to that is especially in special education, we add a lot of support that is going to be able to be used no matter where they happen to move to, if it's another district. Special education, we are very, very large in our special education program and making sure that our teachers understand all the different ramifications of being a special education teacher, whether it be that IEPs that they're writing or what is it, the behavior support that's absolutely necessary. We also do that in all of our other curriculum and pieces as well. So I think that whatever you have a teacher, and I'm very proud of this, who is from Los Angeles Unified School District preliminary programs, I'm very proud to say that I think they're extremely well prepared to, to go into another district as well. Because again, it's the holistic piece that we're using constant coaching and support that we use for all of our teachers that to us is really ideal. And it's also a two-year program for our preliminary program, which really solidifies all that they're doing within the classroom. And I hope that answers your question. Mr. Hillis, this is Joe. Just to say that there's a very, uh, um, there's interviews and et cetera for the selection process. And once uh, candidates are admitted, they do sign something that says they will 
teach so many years beyond their getting their credential for LA Unified before moving on. So there is that, that short-term retention as well as the long-term retention. But not everybody gets to stay in LA, I think is the answer. People move. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Member Tchaikovsky. Yeah, congratulations, um, LAUSD. Wow, it's like a giant complex um, puzzle whose goal is to serve kids. It's pretty impressive, not just the variety of programs, but I was particularly struck, Marco, by your comments about um, getting beyond silos and the team approach that's evident, not only in your comments, but in the report. So I guess I just was wondering if you could if you could identify one or two factors that contribute to that coordination and anti-silo thinking in your large urban district that might apply to other districts, what would they be? And, and I'm also wondering about the role of, of teacher residency, given that California has demonstrated a commitment to continue investing in that. Um, I found that residency is kind of a cool um, fulcrum around which to, you know, uh, connect these relationships, particularly with human resources and all those other things. So that was kind of like a two-part complex question, just like LA Unified, but if you're willing to respond, that would be awesome. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'll address the siloed work and then perhaps uh, Dr. Pernan can help me with the residency piece. Um, but within these silos, um, particularly the administrator induction and credentialing work, that tended to move around into different divisions or units within LA Unified. We were our own division for a short time. We were part of Division of Instruction. We were part of the superintendent's office. And the entire time, Pat and I had conversations about bringing them together under one roof in human resources. And that happened last year. And so we were able to begin more of that coordination. Then having weekly meetings with the team leads for each program and each reporting out on a weekly basis, ensuring that we all knew what was happening within all the other programs was also helpful. And then we also began what we called our passport series where we would attend each other's professional developments to really learn deeply about the curriculum and strategies being used. And so we started to one, avoid duplicating content curriculum or certain presentations within programs. Uh, but then two, we had a common thread of like equity being, um, woven throughout the content. And so that was very helpful, again, in breaking down some of those silos. So I think some of those approaches for us were very helpful. Um, so really just the checking in on a regular basis, having us all within that one roof, and then the constant meetings and messaging about our purpose there uh, to provide equitable outcomes for all of the students that we serve. And I know the previous question was around retention. Um, really, our approach has been that once our teachers and administrators fulfill their requirement to stay with us two years after completing a credential, most of them do stay with us. But the ones who do leave, we still want to ensure that they're highly prepared, regardless of what school they're going to be teaching or leading. Even if it's a neighboring district, we see them as all of our students within our charge. And so we want them to have highly prepared teachers and school leaders. And so that's the approach that we take as well. And uh, Pat, maybe you can help with the second part of that question, because we like to do things by collaboration and partnership. <laughs> One of the things that you asked about was the residency programs. We do obviously do not have a residency program, but one of our big areas that we like to work on is the, our regional network meeting, where we bring the surrounding universities, the surrounding uh, LACO, whatever it happens to be, county offices together to talk about some of the things that are going on with the Commission on Teacher Credentialing and the CTC. We talk about the meetings at the CTC. We do have people who have residency programs to come there because we said, okay, let's work together because we are, do, we are addressing all of the same standards, but let's work together to learn from each other. We also know that LA Unified does work in collaboration with the surrounding universities for the residency program. So we're very happy about that. So it's inclusive. We want everyone to be able to work together to share the work that they're doing, to share their ideas so that we can have the best possible teachers in Los Angeles Unified School District. So again, it's a collaboration. And again, I love the residency programs, but we can't have it as a program ourselves, but I do love the residency programs. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, wow, California's finest, LAUSD. <laughs> Thank you. All right, um, any other comments? If, this is Joe again. Um, 
Katrina, if I can add two other pieces, I mean, I, I just visited LAUSD for the visit. So for me and the whole team to notice these two pieces, I just want to bring them out. One was the extent of collaboration and cooperation. I mean, when Dr. Pernan says, and, and when Dr. Nava says, we want to make sure that we're in sync with everybody else and and because we're all working to prepare the best educators for all the children, they are not joking. I have never heard of of collaboration with different entities like this. And, and they all said, well, why would we be in competition with each other? There aren't enough teachers out there anyway. So let's all make the best. And I thought, wow. I mean, it was just, it, it, it's really nice. And um, so that was one. And the other one is this attention to, um, I, what were they, what were they called? Gold, gold pass alumni or something but alumni so they have people who are now administrators who were in their teacher preparation programs who were instructional aides in the program who were students in the pro in the at in LAUSD and brought them all the way through and I think just knowing that network and building that personal relationship uh, or those personal relationships has really helped them be collaborative in so many ways, both inside and outside the district. And um, I, yeah, relationships were really important and you could see it, you could sense it. Okay, thank you, Joe. Any other comments or questions? Member Sullivan? Uh, oh, thank you, got a promotion. I know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, um, Member Taylor has his hand raised, I noticed. Okay, Member Taylor. Thank you. Uh, I, again, uh, uh, congratulations on, on uh, a great review, a great report. Uh, I, I thank you for that cooperation piece as well. Um, uh, it is so important uh, for teacher educators not to be in competition with each other, but to be in collaboration with each other. Um, uh, I'm, and, and so great to hear it in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, there's such a dire need for uh, to diversify the teacher working, the, the, the teacher workforce in the state of California and have it reflect more the, uh, the diversity that's present in the classrooms. Uh, can you speak to uh, your plans for the future to uh, continue to uh, diversify the workforce and, and perhaps collaborate with uh, uh, other areas of the state uh, to capitalize on your strengths in that area. Yes, so one of the programs that we've recently recently been authorized for is the preliminary administrative services credential. So I was just here with this group uh, in October where we received our approval and we're getting ready to launch that program in July. And we're very intentional about ensuring that our current teacher leaders who are aspiring to become administrators and come into our preliminary admin program, that they truly reflect the diverse communities that they will be serving in within Los Angeles Unified. And that they make a commitment also to stay and work in some of our schools where it may be difficult uh, keeping staff uh, for, for the long term. And so we're really looking again at that equity driven leadership piece so that they can you know, do some good work for our students in the community. So really looking at having a strong bench of aspiring administrators. Um, we're looking at some of our data and we're seeing that there's a, a slightly higher portion of teachers and school administrators who will not be coming back when we do resume, resume in-person instruction, whether hybrid or fully in the classroom. Um, because they're ready to retire and may not want to deal with COVID-19 and the challenges that it'll still present when we do return. So we want to have highly effective school leaders ready to go have that bench. And not just highly effective, but that they also reflect the community they come from. Um, Joe earlier referenced that gold pass, the, the card for our candidates who go through our programs. And right now our current pathway, uh, we say it's our cradle to credential. Um, we have many uh, students who finish our K-12 schooling, enter our career ladder for paraprofessionals, receive their teaching credential, they can clear that credential with us now. Now they'll be able to receive their preliminary admin credential and clear it with us. And through continued partnerships, we may be able to offer other types of degrees like masters or doctorates. Um, but the important piece there is that for many of our 
paraprofessionals, they live in the communities where they're working as paraprofessionals. So we want to build capacity within them because they're currently in our schools interacting with students. And for many of them, they have some of the closest relationships with our students just because that age gap is lower because they understand the community there it's easier to connect sometimes with students they might be the most trusted adult on the campus and so we want to build their capacity we want them to teach in the communities where they grew up in or other similar ones and so um, that's one reason we offer so many tuition waived programs because we know the importance of having that diversity and then working with our ihe partners and other nonprofit educational organizations, then we can try to share some of what's working in terms of strategy so that other districts can try to diversify their workforce, teachers and administrators. And Pat, I don't know if you'd like to add anything on to that. No, Marco, it's not, a, I can add on to what you said. It was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I think one of the main things that we know in LA Unified is that we began our programs to diversify the teaching uh, force within LA Unified. And that was uh, started in 1984 with legislation, actually 83. So again, we're looking at this and that expansion. And as Marco said, from birth through, uh, through their entire career, we can actually start to offer this. And we think it's really important to bring the community who want to teach in LA Unified to LA Unified and stay within LA Unified because they offer so much for all of our students. So again, it's, it's to me a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for all of us to do this together. And it's Joe again, but I want you to know, uh, uh, committee members, that I pushed on this issue because the framing was always around the diversity of the area. And I said, there are still parts of LA Unified that are not as diverse as other parts. Does that mean that this, that all of the learning and, and everything will, will, will not impact those areas. And uh, no, they are looking to um, add diversity to those areas as well by people who may want to move into those parts, but maybe the hiring of teachers will be different. If not, then looking at the curriculum through an equity lens will be different. So I, I did push on that part because I was just really, mm, I, I came from a, uh, I was served as a principal of a school and people said, oh, your school's so diverse. No, my school was 98% Latino. That, that was the diversity. So I just wanted to make sure that they weren't thinking that that was the end all and be all and it's not for them. So they're looking to bring equity to all areas of Los Angeles, even that do not maybe look like diversity at this time. Terrific, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, this is an action item. Do I have a motion? I have a motion by Member Joukowsky and a second. A second by Member Balatayo. Uh, we will now do a roll call vote. In favor, say aye. Opposed, say no. Secretary, please call the names. Amelie Balatayo. Aye. Kathy Krishna. Aye. Katrina Joukowsky. Aye. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. All right, motion carries. Congratulations. And I really appreciated hearing about your programs today and uh, that you had such a terrific site visit and that it was a, such a wonderful experience for you. Um, and what an amazing, I like, I want to hear about all of this in 10 years from now, this pathway of people in their community getting um, their credential and, and teaching their own. It's really uh, good stuff. So thank you, uh, Ms. Pernan, Dr. Nava, Dr. Birdsell, Ms. Williams-George, and Dr. Columbini. It, Have a great day. Like, Congratulations. Wait. Joe Birdsell, before you go, if I might, committee member, can I jump in quickly? Okay. Thank you. This is unscripted. But I had forgotten until I saw Joe's smiling face, Dr. Birdsell's smiling face on the screen that, um, especially in light of all of the wonderful remarks that have been made this morning, recognizing our BIR members and the importance of them and how much work they do, I would just like to take a minute while we have Dr. Birdsell here to um, recognize her and to honor her. This was her last site visit for us, and I'm getting very teary about this. Um, Dr. Birdsell is an institution in and of her own. Uh, I had a site visit in October where one of our um, program review members at one point when we were in deliberation said, 
You know, I just want to share with everybody something that I learned from Dr. Birdsell when I was on a site visit with her. And I thought, okay, that just speaks volumes. Um, Dr. Birdsell has been, well, for one thing, she used to work for the commission. So she was a consultant. Um, she was kind of a, a one of us at one point um, and then moved out into, you know, the field again in her new capacity, but continued to um, serve and serve so well and serve so graciously. Um, we came to really rely on her for some of our tougher visits and tough could be anything from an institution that has a lot of programs and a lot of pathways. And so there's a lot of coordination there to um, a visit that maybe for an institution that was struggling just a little bit. And we knew that if there was um, difficult news to be delivered, that um, Joe could do it in a way that would make an institution feel grateful that they were hearing it. Um, she's just kind. She's always said yes. So we've tried not to always ask. And we're going to miss her so much. She has taught the consultants a lot. She has taught every BIR member that's ever worked with her a lot. Um, I know her retirement, which happened a year ago, was very well deserved. Um, and we are sorry to lose her, but we're so, so grateful that we had her for as long as we did. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of the commission and everyone in PST, Joe. Thank you, Erin. That was lovely. Thank you very much. It was my honor to serve. Yeah. Keep on going. You guys are moving in the right direction. Oh, you're such a great cheerleader. Thank you. Congratulations, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, on that um, cheerful note, <laughs> cheerful note um, I'm going to suggest we take a 10 minute break that'll put us a couple minutes over for the 10 minute start. But uh, we've been at this for a while, so we'll come back at 10.02 uh, for item 11. Welcome back, everybody. Do we have everybody in the room? Do we have our team from Concordia here? Yes, Michelle, right on. All right, uh, item 11, welcome back, by the way, is the report of the accreditation team to Concordia University, Irvine. Consultant Hart Boyd will introduce this item. Joining him today is team lead Carol Hodges and institutional representatives, Dr. Kent Schlick Schlichtmeyer, Dean, Dr. Heather Vesner, Assistant Dean, and Dr. Barbara Howard, Director of Assessment and Accreditation. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? All right, Dr. Boyd, or Mr. Boyd, will you begin, please? Yes, thank you. Concordia University Irvine site visit took place from February 8th through the 11th. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the site visit was conducted virtually rather than in person. A total of 380 interviews were conducted with various stakeholders, and with the exception of it being held over technology, the site visit proceeded in accordance with all normal accreditation protocols. The team at Concordia was great to work with, and they were all extremely thorough and thoughtful in their preparation for the site visit. As mentioned earlier, representing Concordia are Dr. Kent Schlichtemeyer, Dean of the School of Education, Dr. Heather Vesner, Assistant Dean, and Dr. Barbara Howard, Director of Assessment and Accreditation. Also joining us today is Dr. Carol Hodges, Dean of the School of Education and Leadership at Notre Dame de Namur University. Carol served as the team lead and was fantastic to work with. And she was extremely knowledgeable and thoughtful and she was an extremely knowledgeable and thoughtful leader throughout the process. Finally, I would also like to thank each of the members of our site visit team for contributing their time and expertise to this visit. The team worked diligently in preparation for the visit and worked extremely hard during the visit. I'll stop now and turn it over to Carol, who will present the findings and the accreditation recommendation. Thanks, Hart. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am delighted to be here and representing the team that went to Concordia University, Irvine. Um, you've already heard who I am, so I am going to simply jump into my report. Um, first, I wanna thank the Concordia University, Irvine uh, folks for their extensive preparation for this site visit. 
Um, this is the first time I've been on a Zoom visit. So it was literally uh, informative and impressive to see what they had to do above and beyond what you would usually do at a site visit uh, where you went in person. Um, their organization and support prior to the visit allowed the team to um, start the visit with a solid understanding of their program. Uh, and that organization and support continued all the way through the visit. Um, they um, organized the visit schedule so that every member of the team had their own personal uh, email address at the university. And we each had our own Zoom rooms that we used throughout the visit for our interviews. We had an assigned support staff person who was with us the full way. Uh, they always opened the meeting, the Zoom meeting. They made sure all the attendees were there and then they graciously introduced us and left so we could complete our interviews. Um, they, um, everything flowed seamlessly. I was so impressed, um, particularly since with Zoom, there is uh, the temptation to uh, pack things in because you're not walking between buildings. Uh, and doing things that you would usually do on a in-person site visit, but they did a nice job of spacing things out. So we had breaks between the Zoom, no Zoom fatigue, um, and really had time to uh, see each other and work as well as work with them. There was somebody available all the time. Uh, I was just incredibly impressed by their uh, dedication and their willingness to be there for us. So uh, thanks to the university for all they did to put this visit together. Um, I said in my team uh, lead survey that if you want a model for how to do a Zoom visit, Concordia University is the place to look. It was just incredible. Um, and I apologize if you, I, you hear noise behind me. Um, I had to, I am taking care of a puppy, an additional puppy for a friend of mine and they're, they're having a tug of war behind my chair. Um, I want to thank my team uh, for the cordiality, their depth of knowledge, and their hard work. Um, for many of this, this was our first Zoom, so it really took a lot of uh, energy and learning to do it. Um, they were just an amazing group of people, and I would be delighted and honored to work with them. Any and all of them are on a project or future visit. I mean, it really was a very collegial group. Um, I also want to thank Hart. Um, I will work on anything that Hart ever does. So if he ever needs an assistant, I am happy to be there for him. Um, he, he was amazingly organized. Um, he was helpful. He was always available. Um, so Hart, thank you. Um, it was an amazing experience. And then our team members, uh, Lori, Craig, Virginia, Jennifer, and particularly Dina Fiore. I don't know if you know, but a week before the visit, we lost our PPS person. Dina had just finished her BIR training. She had never been on a visit before and agreed with a week to go to join the team. And I can see the CUI people smiling. She was amazing. I mean, she got up to speed. She was enthusiastic. Uh, it, it was just wonderful to have her on the team. So particularly thanks to her. Um, so about the visit. Our visit was February 8th through 11th. Um, the team made decisions on common standards and program standards for the following programs. Preliminary multiple subject, preliminary single subject, preliminary education specialist, uh, mild moderate, preliminary administrative services credential, the pupil personnel services school counselor, and then the teacher, they have a teacher induction program. Um, we reviewed all the institutional and programmatic information and materials prior to the visit and during the site visit. Um, we had interviews with administrators, faculty, candidates, graduates, and school personnel, including district employed supervisors, school administrators, district administrators, superintendents, HR personnel. Um, the interview, the feedback from the interviews was just very supportive of everything we found in the printed materials. Um, so an overview. At all levels, um, Concordia University Irvine articulates and consist consistently maintains a well-developed mission and vision that provides the foundation and direction for everything that happens at the university, from the president's office, through the credential programs, and into the interaction with their stakeholder communities. Uh, their university mission is to empower students through innovative and exceptional educational practices for a life of teaching, learning, and service. 
that positively affects local and global communities. Their vision is to prepare servant leaders who will thrive in today's world and shape tomorrow's. They work collaboratively to create a culture and it is, you see that culture, we saw it throughout every interview, we saw it throughout all their program materials, uh, a culture committed to the relentless pursuit of improvement and um, um, which they use the word Kaizen. Um, after reviewing the website, reading the documents provided by the university and of course the CTC dashboard and especially the interviews, um, the team could see that every aspect of the program, admissions, advising and candidate support, the selection and professional support of faculty, identification of field experience and clinical practice sites, selection and support of district employed supervisors, collaborations with districts, agencies, and other stakeholders, their assessment of candidate competence and ongoing engagement with graduates. Um, it is obvious that the university and the school live out its vision and mission. So based on these findings, the team determined the following. The preconditions were aligned, the program standards for all programs were met, and the common standards were met. And based on those findings, the team recommends accreditation. Thank you. Terrific, thank you, Dr. Hodges. We now invite the institutional representatives to briefly comment about the visit. We remind you that this is not a time to dispute this team report, but rather to provide any thoughts you had about the visit. Well, good morning uh, to all of you and thank you so much for your time uh, this morning and uh, the opportunity to meet with you. Uh, my name is Kent Schlichtemeyer, and it's my privilege to serve as the Dean of the School of Education. Uh, I came to Concordia in 1988, when we used to have four faculty members uh, in the School of Education, and it has grown to uh, well over 1,100 students and 30 full-time faculty and staff. And it's been a real honor to see the evolution of our programs uh, over three decades. Um, I'm pleased to introduce uh, with me uh, our Assistant Dean, Professor Heather Vesner, uh, who has uh, been at the university for a, a long time as well and served as the Director of the Teacher Credential Program and now the Assistant uh, Dean. And then Dr. Barbara Howard uh, is our uh, Director of Accreditation and Assessment. Our university believes very strongly in the pursuit of getting better, and we feel it as though it's worth investing uh, good money to have a director to oversee the accreditation and assessment process. And Barbara leads with great uh, skill, passion, and uh, great enthusiasm and can't wait to be a BIR review member uh, in the future. So uh, she's ready to go. We really enjoyed uh, this process and uh, found that the collaborative uh, possibilities that uh, the accreditation process created for us to meet uh, as colleagues, as team members, to review data, to talk to constituents, uh, to, to prepare the documents, to prepare the website, uh, to organize the Zoom meetings. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a good team work process. And uh, we, we were thankful to be a part of this. Uh, we felt as though Hart uh, Boyd, and we thank Hart for his uh, ongoing uh, direction uh, leading up to the visit and uh, his uh, poise and calm demeanor throughout the uh, visit uh, that calmed us uh, throughout the visit. And then Carol's exemplary uh, leadership as well. It was so nice to know that the committee members had a, a wealth of experience coming into the assessment here at our university. So we knew they were gonna take a deep dive into our programs and give us a real thorough uh, an accurate reflection of current reality as they were able to uh, ascertain through their interviews and evaluation of documents. So we, uh, we found the Zoom process uh, to be uh, a good one. And uh, it's amazing, uh, it's maybe a little easier to get respondents to commit yes, right? That they wanna participate in the uh, reviews when they just have to click on the camera uh, and save the travel time to campus. Uh, we, we found that the, the entire Zoom process was uh, a good way to uh, present uh, accurate uh, findings and uh, good participation from our constituents in this review pro process. So anyway, we, we're very uh, uh, thankful 
uh, to have been part of this accreditation process at this time in history. And uh, we're thankful for the uh, feedback that the team provided uh, to us as uh, we are uh, eager uh, to get better. And uh, we uh, are, are just uh, looking forward to moving to the next steps uh, and continuing in our pursuit of uh, improvement. So thank you. And thank you for your comments. Uh, any other comments from the institutional representatives? Okay, well, thank you. Um, at this time, uh, questions or comments from the committee members? That means your report was very thorough. <laughs> no, no stone or left unturned. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, appreciate the report and your comments. Um, this is an action item. Do I have a motion? Motion by Member Tchaikovsky. Do I have a second? Oh, Aaron, do you have a comment? Sorry, I just wanted to acknowledge that committee member, oh, committee member Taylor had his hand raised and then lowered it. <laughs> um, I uh, just uh, was gonna uh, ask my standard question. Uh, uh, congratulations on a great report. Um, uh, uh, really nice uh, to hear uh, Dr. Dean uh, Schlichtemeyer talk to uh, the importance of continuous improvement. Um, uh, uh, so important in teacher preparation. Uh, at the moment, the state has a dire need to diversify the teacher workforce. Uh, I was just going to ask about plans uh, for uh, CUI to uh, uh, contribute to diversifying the, the teacher workforce and attracting uh, um, diverse students to uh, be, become teachers. Thank you very much, Dr. Taylor, for your uh, affirmation. I appreciate it. And uh, your question is, is an ongoing uh, challenge, I think, for all of our institutions uh, to address increasing the diversity in our uh, teaching uh, workforce. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we're doing a couple things here at Concordia. Uh, we participate in a Teach Academy in Santa Ana, uh, where we send representatives from our School of Education to meet uh, regularly with the Teach Academy uh, personnel as they work with students uh, in uh, the surrounding uh, areas of Irvine, Santa Ana, Orange, uh, uh, Newport, and uh, uh, Tustin. And uh, we are uh, trying to uh, attract them uh, into the teaching profession. Uh, we have created uh, two uh, Teach Academy scholarships for students that graduate from the Teach Academy program uh, to come to our university. Uh, we are also, uh, for the last five years, we've held a, a Latina uh, conference where we've had 200, 300 a young Hispanic female uh, candidates on campus uh, where they meet with uh, district representatives, university personnel, and uh, just help them learn uh, ideas, strategies uh, to get into college, expand their vision, and uh, think about teaching. Uh, we've expanded the Latina conference to a Latinx conference uh, where we've now uh, invited both males and females to our campus. Uh, we're pleased to announce we just uh, were awarded the HSI uh, status two years ago. So our campus is uh, taking a proactive stance and, and again, trying to uh, move in that direction. Uh, we, we advertise uh, our programs at uh, multiple conferences um, uh, around the, the state of California. Uh, so um, we're, we're trying to appeal to a wide uh, audience. Uh, we recruit uh, uh, for our uh, master's programs uh, through an outside agency called K-12 Alliance. They help us um, uh, market our uh, graduate programs and they ho hold information sessions literally all over uh, the state of California. So we're, we're uh, doing our very best in that area. That sounds great, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, it really is about everybody doing their bit, so. Uh, thank you. Great, good question. All right, 
I'm looking for hands. For some reason, I'm not seeing them, but I appreciate your help, Aaron. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right. Uh, do I have a motion? I had one by Member Chikowski earlier. Thank you. And a second by Member Balatayo. Uh, we will now do a roll call vote. Secretary, uh, please call the names. Jomaline Balatayo. Aye. Kathy Gracia. Aye. Katrina Chikowski. Aye. Bob Fraley. Aye. Mike Hillis. Aye. Lynn Larson. Aye. Marty Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. Oh, terrific. Uh, motion carries. Congratulations uh, on a great site visit, great programs, and getting better, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, we hope you have a great day, Dr. Suchtemeyer, Dr. Vesner, um, Dr. You. Howard, Ms. Hodges, and Mr. Boyd. Congratulations. Thank you so much to all of you. Have a great day. Yep. Bye. I'm going to uh, turn the meeting over now to my wonderful co-chair, uh, Dr. Felly. Cool. Thanks, Anna. Um, we are now at the uh, 1030 time certain. How are we on uh, the membership for people being present? Aaron, do we have them all here? Aaron, you're on mute. Um, Sorry, thank you. I said it looks like everyone. It looks like um, looks like everyone's here actually. Yeah, Cheyenne was bringing them in as you were asking. Uh, we have. We're still waiting for one more to make. I was it just going to say, I don't see Gina Mandel. <laughs> oh, and she just joined in the attendees room, so I'm sure Cheyenne will be bringing her in. Yep. There we go. So we good to go, you think? Yeah, that's everyone. Okay, okay sounds good. So 10.30 times certain, we're on item 12. It's the report of the accreditation revisit team to Cuneo Valley Unified School District. Consultant Miranda Gutierrez will introduce the item. And joining her today is team lead Denise Duell and institutional representatives Gina Mandel, induction coordinator and mentor, and Kenny Liu, director of professional learning. Anyone need to recuse himself? Yeah, I do. We have one recusal. Was that Member Hillis? Are yep. there any others? All right, Ms. Gutierrez, you please begin. Thank you. Good morning. This is the report, a report of the accreditation revisit to Conejo Valley Unified School District, or CVUSD. A site visit was held in January 2020. As a result of that visit, the team recommended accreditation <clears throat> with stipulations, and this committee accepted that recommendation. Part of those stipulations were to host a revisit in year seven. Over the last year, I've had the pleasure of working with CVUSD to provide support and preparing for the revisit. The work that CVUSD has done to address the stipulations really came through over the last year and, the cul and culminating at the site visit. The revisit took place on February 1st and 2nd of this year with one team member and a consultant. I'd like to thank CVUSD, both Gina Mandel and Kenny Liu for their collaboration over, their, over the last year and the focus they had on addressing the stipulations. I'd also like to thank our team lead, Denise Duell, for her thorough review of the documentation leading up to the visit and during the site visit. I will now turn it over to Denise, who will talk you through the stipulations and the revisit team findings. Good morning. It was a pleasure to have the opportunity to return to Conejo Valley Unified School District to review the induction program and the changes they've made. This was a revisit to confirm that three stipulations placed upon, upon the program last year had been successfully addressed. Stipulation one, CVUSD eliminates all required professional development. They have since removed the required professional development. Stipulation two, CVUSD eliminates extraneous documentation that does not directly reflect the individual needs of the candidate and the candidate's growth throughout the IOP process. 
The program has created an ILP based upon the individual needs of each candidate without extra documentation. Stipulation three, CVUSD ensures that candidates' ILP goals and tasks are driven by the candidates' individual needs and professional interests. This final stipulation has been met. After examining the website, the handbook, ILP, and other documents, Miranda Gutierrez and I interviewed the program coordinator, the director of professional learning, the superintendent, mentors, as well as 26 year one candidates and 14 year two candidates. Throughout the visit, we repeatedly heard about how diligently the program coordinator has worked to bring about the necessary changes. Everyone was effusive in their comments about her, about the induction team and the work done. In addition, it was clear from our interviews with candidates that all appreciate the mentors and their support. It was also clear that CBUSD now has a program to meet candidates where they are and to encourage individualized growth and decision-making. We were consistently told about the type of support and the fact that mentors were there to listen and ask guiding questions. Candidates never felt they had been told what to do. Instead, they felt empowered to make decisions. They consistently reported appreciating that the ILP is what they want their focus to be. Mentors provide resources, a shoulder, and guiding questions to aid in reflection. But everything in the ILP is, I quote, and I quote, ours right out of our classroom. I was particularly struck by a candidate who said when asked about mentoring, she centers me. I can be always looking at the future and she helps me to see what I've done well in the present. I don't know how I would have done this without her. Others agreed. It was indeed a testament to the three mentors and the individualized mentoring program they built. After these interviews confirming what we had reviewed over the last months, it is the recommendation of this team that the three stipulations be removed and that Conejo Valley Unified School District is granted full accreditation. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ms. Well. Uh, we now invite institutional representatives to briefly comment about the visit. We remind you this is not a time to dispute the team report, but rather provide any, uh, any thoughts that you had about the visit itself. Uh, Ms. Mandel, it looks like you are muted. <laughs> there we go. Um, first of all, thank you to Miranda and Denise for uh, revisiting and um, especially for being so kind and, uh, you know, I just say patient with me. Uh, this is my first year as a coordinator in this role. So um, that transition for me was new. Um, so thank you so much. Miranda held my hand throughout the year, so that was very helpful. Um, and Denise stepped in and, and just was very gracious and kind to me as well. So, of course, thanks to Kenny, uh, Kenny Lou for his support throughout this process. Um, and to all of you for bearing with me as I stumble through um, my uh, uh, input here, which is to say, um, at first, uh, you know, when you when you hear a report out, um, moving, you know, telling you that um, telling you that your program needs improvement, it's kind of a wow, really? We thought we were so great, <laughs> but the truth is, uh, perspective really brings true learning, um, and it's an outside perspective often that brings about change. So. Um, the process itself has been motivating, encouraging. Um, it's caused us to take a deep dive and look within um, and really make some institutional changes in the program that really um, I see now and the mentors see, we all see how much it's benefited the candidates. So again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's been a huge growth for, for me personally, for all of us in the program, but mostly, 
um, in the field of education, we're in it to learn. And I feel like not only have we learned, but our candidates are learning. Uh, we've improved our coaching strategies. We've improved our mentoring. We've improved our personal learning uh, and our takeaways to support our candidates, especially um, in this very awkward time of education. So thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. There was no stumbling in your presentation there at all. <laughs> That was very well stated. Thank you for expressing that from the heart. It really gives us a clear idea, a picture of both your new role, which is always in, but, but the fact of, uh, of the initial feeling of what are we doing wrong? We thought we were great. And I think you expressed it perfectly, which we all experience at one time or another and continue to experience in our lives professionally and, and uh, personally as well. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Mr. Liu, any comments you wish to offer? Yeah, I mean, I, I think as uh, sort of as uh, Ms. Mandel mentioned, you know, it's strange to say, but I, I think, you know, looking back now, Ms. Mandel, myself, and certainly our organization, we're really appreciative of the, um, of the stipulations that we received last year. Um, I think looking at, you know, how much our program has grown to be um, individualized and to, of course, best support our um, teachers and their individual needs and therefore our students, um, we're really grateful for the feedback and for the outside perspective, uh, we know moving forward, you know, as we continue to engage in the accreditation process that there's so much value in that for us and for, of course, our teachers and students. So thank you. And then especially just, you know, thank you to Miranda, Denise, and of course, um, Gina for um, the, the, the work. Great. Thanks for your expression. I appreciate that. Uh, this is now an opportunity for any comments or questions from committee members. Seeing none, this is an action item. Is there a motion? Uh, Member uh, Morrison. Member, if you can unmute and state the motion, please. I, I, I had a comment um, I was going to make. Sure. Sure. Um, I just want to um, pick up on what um, both representatives just said. Um, often here when um, we get reports uh, from institutions and the report is what a great place this is. Uh, uh, it's satisfying because you know what great stuff's out there. Uh, but for me, I, I'm always more impressed and more satisfied as a committee member when I get a report from an institution uh, that was um, put stipulations on their program and then they come back and tell us uh, what the process involved and how they uh, were forced to look at their program and the things that they did uh, and how they feel now um, that, that the continuous improvement is, is something that, that's become part of, of what they do. And so uh, I, I, I want to say how appreciative I am for, for what you did uh, and for your uh, attitude to, uh, to, to the stipulations that were, that were, were put on the accreditation. So uh, thank you. Well, thanks, Ms. Morrison. Um, any other comments or questions? Or committee members? All right, seeing none, again, this is an action item. Is there a motion? Member Martinez. I recommend that we um, that we accept the recommendation uh, to move from stipulate accreditation with stipulations to accreditation. So moved, is there a second? Second from Member Acrecia. Uh, will the secretary please call the roll? Shomalene Bolatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha? Aye. Katrina Tchaikovsky? Aye. Bob Fraley? Aye. Lynn Larson? Aye. Marty Martinez? Aye. Anna Moore? Aye. Gerard Morrison? Aye. Kevin Taylor? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. And we really do appreciate your sharing of your thoughts. It gives us an idea of how well the system is working. So. Uh, we're on our side, we're always working well uh, to try to refine things. And we, we, uh, we take a little bit of comfort that uh, the work that we do is helping each other and that uh, we congratulate you on the efforts that you have done. Look forward to hearing great things from you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 13. Uh, do we have anybody here for the 1045? I'm checking. I see yes, Kara I'm nodding. Yes. Yes, so, yes. Yes. She sees all her people. They are here. My people. <laughs> We're early. We're going to go ahead and get started then with uh, item 13. That's the report of the seventh year 
report from San Jose State University. Administrator Dr. Kara Mendoza will introduce the item. And joining her today are institutional representatives Dr. Heather Latimer, Dean of the College of Education, Dr. Marcos Pizarro, Associate Dean, and Dr. Isabel Vallejo, Director of Assessment, Accreditation, and Special Projects. Does anyone need to recuse himself? Seeing none, Dr. Mendoza, will you please begin? Good morning. Thank you so much. I'm pleased to present for you today a discussion of the seventh year report for San Jose State University. And I thank our friends at the San Jose State Uni University leadership for joining us here. The site visit for San Jose State was held on February 23rd through the 26th of 2020. Think back. <laughs> it was probably one of the last in-person accreditation visits for 2020. The team determined that the San Jose State um, University rec uh, was recommended for accreditation with a seventh year report. Of the 219 program standards related to the 17 programs offered at San Jose State, all but six standards were met and zero were not met. The following six standards were met with, program standards were met with concern. First, preliminary education specialists for moderate severe only, standard eight, participating in the IFSP, IEP, and post-secondary planning. The team determined that the portion of the standard not apparent in the program was that coursework does not cover, quote, opportunities to demonstrate ability to participate in transition planning from the IEP and the IFSP. Next, preliminary education specialists for mild moderate, moderate to severe and early childhood, standard 15, field experience in a broad range of delivery options. The team determined that all of the standard of standard 15 was met with the exception that a system was not evident for quote, ensuring that candidates have planned experiences and or interactions with the full range of the service delivery system of grades, ages, federal disability categories, and the continuum of special education services. The last program standard that was met with concerns was relative to the adapted physical education added authorization standard eight, also field experience in a broad range of delivery options. The team determined that candidates in one of the pathways only, uh, and that being the undergraduates completing the program requirements for kinesiology bachelor's preparation for teaching degree, reported that 50 of the 70 hours of field work in one course is spent doing, during, doing observation hours in the P-12 schools under the supervision of a credentialed physical education master teacher. Candidates were concerned that student volunteers um, were not student teachers, and thus they did not instruct the class or provide hands-on support to students. While the candidates reported valuable hands-on experience in those placements, the inability to lead instruction prohibited them from working toward assuming full responsibility of the class and for demonstrating teacher performance expectations. And last, of all the five common standards, all were found to be met with the exception of common standard four, continuous improvement. It was evident that San Jose State had comprehensive continuous improvement plan in place. However, at the time of the visit and considering that the San Jose, um, San Jose State program had a new dean, Dean Heather Latimer, the team was unable to confirm the complete process and the results at the end of the process. Uh, with this, the Committee on Accreditation granted the institution accreditation with a seventh year report last March of 2020. In January, San Jose State posted the required seventh year report on their accreditation website, which made that website a living document of sorts, um, and to which we all have access today. Today, the Dean, Assistant Dean, and Director of Assessment Accreditation Special Projects are here to answer any questions, and I thank you for your time. Thank you for the fair report, Dr. Mendoza. We appreciate it. Uh, we now invite the institutional representatives to briefly comment on the report. Any any comments you wish to make? Sure. So, well, first of all, I just want to say thank, thank you, you for providing the opportunity. Oh, I'm getting a little echo. Are we? Are you all okay? Okay. Uh, uh, so, it, um, as Kara noted, this was, I think, one of the last things that we did before we all went into lockdown. And so, uh, um, you know, it was it was interesting to to 
have this report. We were very excited about the, the idea that um, you know, we we're coming through accreditation. And, and obviously, we all put a lot of hard work into that. Uh, um, and it was really a great opportunity, as the, the last uh, uh, team shared, that to, to look at and revisit and think about and reflect on and grow your programs and your work. And so we appreciated the visit and then boom, went into COVID lockdown. Um, so the idea of how are we going to respond particularly to these uh, areas for improvement was something that uh, we wanted to make sure did not get lost in that shuffle. And we think we've done uh, an appropriate and uh, uh, job of really responding to those and taking those to heart. So I'll just briefly outline some of the things that we have done. Uh, um, so with standard eight in the APEAA standards, uh, uh, we've developed the, I mean, specifically a student teaching seminar course in adapted PE. Uh, and it will start in, in fall 2021, and it will only have a PEAA candidates enrolled in it so that it is not just for the undergraduates, but it is for the graduate students as well. Uh, uh, for standard eight in the educational specialist credential, uh, we've gone back and looked at how we can ensure that that standard is addressed in several different courses. And that information on those with links to the syllabi is provided in that seventh year report. And I will also also note that we're currently in the process of hiring a new faculty member with a specialization in extensive support needs to ensure that we'll be able to uh, uh, prioritize and meet all of those standards in the future. Uh, um, and then for standard 15 under educational specialists, uh, uh, you know, that's something that, that as we're looking at revising, we're, we're obviously in the process as are everyone uh, uh, at looking at how we revise in response to the new TPEs and the expectation that there will be both a cycle one and a cycle two uh, um, is something that we're really excited about as an opportunity to really ensure that we have our students experience the full range of special education uh, um, expectations, regardless of whether they're in a extensive support, a mild, moderate, or an early childhood experience for their credentialing. Uh, um, so that the, those, those pieces are, we've addressed them directly for now, and we expect to address them more fully uh, um, and more robustly as we go through that next cycle. Uh, for standard four around continuous improvement, as was noted, you know, really we, we had great plans in place, uh, uh, but hadn't had a chance to fully implement. And I will say that uh, uh, not only uh, did we continue to implement during this pandemic time period, but I will also, in terms of the institutional support for implementation, Isabel's position, our Director of Assessment and Accreditation and Special Projects, has been made a permanent position and we're delighted by that. Uh, um, she has taken a huge leadership role in ensuring that we'll be able to provide that uh, um, consistency around looking at our data, looking at uh, um, feedback from the field. We've had we have quarterly meetings now with our advisory board. Um, our faculty come to and program coordinators come to those advisory board meetings and share out and hear directly from advisory board members to ensure that we are getting that consistency of response and, um, and then take that information back to their departments in order to review both the data that we're collecting from CTC and EdQ, as well as the feedback that we hear from the field to inform decisions moving forward. So, uh, um, you know, we, it, it certainly has been a challenging year for everyone, but uh, I wanna make sure that, that we did prioritize this. This is obviously something that is, is critical, not only because it's our accreditation, but also because it is at the heart of ensuring that we're providing quality programs for our students. Uh, um, so really appreciate your time. And I wanna also say a big thank you to Cara and to the whole team that came last year their questions and their conversations, their thoughtful approach to the visit really made a huge impact on our faculty, staff, students, and community. Thank you, Dr. Latimer. And we appreciate you sharing all the details and we understand the challenges certainly. And it seems that you are definitely overcoming them in certain situations. So thank you for your presentation on that. Um, anybody else from the institution wish to make any comment? All right, seeing none, I have a question from committee members. Uh, Member Larson. 
Um, there's an error on the document. And I'm not sure if, if that's important or not. Um, the first one should state preliminary ed specialist moderate severe only standard eight, and it says mild moderate. Indeed. Yes, um, that is correct. <laughs> and uh, I noticed that also in the report, so um, we will follow up with that for sure. Thank you, uh, Ms. Larson, for pointing that out to us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other comment or question on the committee member? Okay, this is identified as an information or an action item. Uh, action is not required. Um, Ms. Sullivan? I do see a hand, and then it just got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I see mem uh, Member Taylor's hand yes. up, and I think it's because it's in the tree up there that we can't see it. So, for all oh, of there. you, if you just raise your if you if if you raise your hand. Sorry, my camera wasn't on. That's helpful as a in addition to the little icon because it's really sometimes hard to see. Uh, yeah, just a, a, a really a comment. Uh, uh, congratulations um, um, on. Uh, uh, this next step and uh, thank you for your leadership uh, with the Institute for uh, uh, Teachers uh, last summer transitioning to uh, online. Uh, that was uh, fantastic to see, really important work uh, supporting teachers as they uh, pivoted to online. Uh, so many of us have had to do that in such difficult transition. Uh, and for uh, uh, the outstanding speaker series uh, um, uh, that um, I, I've been participating in. Uh, um, uh, it was great to hear uh, 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 Gloria Gladstone Billings the other day um, and uh, just lead in on so many fronts. Uh, thank you for your work. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Taylor. I really appreciate that. You know, we, we've got uh, on one of the, the positives, I guess, of this time period, the, the silver linings uh, um, is that, it does allow for opportunities to engage uh, um, more broadly. And so uh, um, the, the speaker series that we've put together now, I will put the link in the chat. It's free. Anybody who's interested is welcome to join. Uh, um, and then the, the webinar from last summer that we're about, get, we originally started it for our students to say, how do we ensure that we're supporting them as they're graduating to go out and teach if they're gonna be teaching online, because although we provided some learning there, it was gonna be a much different experience than we they had been prepared for. Uh, um, and we opened it up and it ended up being uh, used across the state. And I've heard from other states around the country as well. So uh, um, it's free and available and people are more than welcome to use it. Great, thank you both. Any other committee member have any comment or question? I this is an information and or action item. Um, action is not required, though as a body, we could, the COA, vote to accept the seventh year report from San Jose uh, State University. So, one of the circumstances, perhaps, uh, would be a good opportunity at this point for the record. Is there anybody who would like to make a motion? Member Morrison. I move that we accept um, the seventh year report from San Jose uh, State U University. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by Member Taylor. Secretary, please call the roll. Chomaly and Balatayo? Aye. Kathy Krisha? Aye. Katrina Chikowski? Aye. Bob Fraley? Aye. Mike Hillis? Aye. Lynn Larson? Aye. Marty Martinez? Aye. Anna Moore? Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Kevin Taylor. Aye. Great motion carries an thing. So congratulations on the work that you're doing, um, especially under these unusual circumstances. So thank you again for the clear report. Thank you, Dr. Mendoza. Uh, thank you, Dr. Latimer, Dr. Bizarro, and Dr. Valeno for joining us. Thanks again, congratulations. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for doing this work in the middle of unusual circumstances. Really appreciate your time and your thoughtful approach. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Well, item 14, we have an 11 o'clock time certain. And do we have the team and ready to go here? We have most of them. Jake is here. And okay. so let's see. Jake, you have the best by far profile photo of anybody yeah. else I've seen. Anybody. I know. It's much better when my video is not. Let me turn it back off so you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> that is classic. That is so great. Wow. Um, yeah, Jake, I'll leave it up to you. I don't know what 
you'd like to do. So the person that we're missing is the team lead. Um, he is out of the country. Um, uh, he's always usually able to join us. It's, it's typically not a problem, um, but it's possible that he's not early because of that. So we can either wait 10 minutes or um, Jake is prepared to proceed without him if necessary. Um, another option, uh, would item 15, is that gonna be a lengthy discussion? And if, if so, then we can, I don't wanna make the people who are here wait for that. But by the same token, it would be nice to have uh, Dr. Litton join us. Sure, yeah, it's, it's lengthy enough. I think the only thing I could do in 10 minutes is perhaps to introduce it. Okay. Um, that, uh, that's about it. <laughs> well, why don't we do this? Um, let's take, can we all take like five minutes and see how we do take a quick stretch break and we'll come back in five and see if Dr. Lindy will join us. Then.